It's time for the Giz Whiz with Mads Maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1624, recorded Thursday, May 25th, 2017. Step two, insert baby. It's time for the Giz Whiz. On this episode, we have techie baby things. You got to start them off early. And then my baby, Charlie, has the last of the doggy gadgets. All next on the Giz Whiz. It's the same dumb show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Giz Whiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs. Growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Giz Whiz now. 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 It is time for the Giz Whiz, and here he is, the consultant of gadgets, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? Doing great myself. It's been a good Are week. Are you doing anything big for the holiday weekend in the United States? No. Nah, no, nah, I'm going to work on my no. garden. going to... Okay. Yeah. Someone was asking me that the other day, and, and you know, sometimes when you don't have a desk job or a normal job... Sometimes the calendar can get away from you, and I was like, "Yes, yes." I cannot think of what holiday this is. It's Memorial Day. Memorial Day Labor. weekend. Yes. Yeah, yes. totally got away from me, and I was like, "Oh, it was." Um, I think I was talking to. I, I last weekend I went to um, a Minecraft convention in Houston, Texas, and um, I put Charlie up in a dog hotel. And I think they were like, "So you're gonna do anything next week, or you're gonna do anything for Memorial Day?" And I was like. I have no idea when that is. When that is. <laughs> nah, no, don't think about it. You know, I was just like, ooh, oh gosh. Uh, How was the doggy hotel experience? What did Charlie, good. what was Charlie, thumbs up or thumbs pause up. up or pause then? Pause up, pause up. Yeah, pause up? it's, okay. um, I did a lot of research, you know, to find the, the right one. There's uh, a few around my area. And uh, the, one, the one that I actually originally chose, I brought him there when I had scheduled the time that I was going to drop him off. And this was maybe a month after I had got him. And I showed up at the dog place and uh, he had medicine for when we originally got him. He had kennel cough, which is a bad thing for dogs. Yes. And so he had medicine and he was finishing up his, um, his medicine. He had like maybe a week left. And they were not cool with that at all. And so they called oh. my doctor, and the doctor said it was fine, but they said that it wasn't. And um, he hadn't been coughing in a long time, which all the internet stuff says that he's totally fine. But um, they were just really not cool with it. Uh, and so I called up the second place on my list, and I said, hey, here's the deal. I need to get to a plane in like two hours. Uh, here's the situation. Are you guys okay with it? Because I was just, I wasn't going to drive around. I was a call, call, call. They said, oh, he'll be fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll take him in. We'll maybe keep him away from the other dogs. Because, yes, it's a big liability if it happens. And, oh, wow. Um, okay. You know, we don't, we don't want anything to, to happen. Of course, everything was fine. He was fine. He had been fine. Every, you know, the, they were just being. Anyway, went to the second place. Love it so much better. Oh, my gosh. They're so nice. And, um, you know, when I came to pick him up this last weekend, I saw him, they were, they were out walking him. You know, it's always great to oh, drive great, up great. and he's getting the walk. They also give you a free dog wash uh, whenever you're there. So you get them back all clean. Oh, Some, wow. Sometimes I'm like, gosh, you just need to go to the doggy daycare for a day. Did they salmonize him or just a wash? Just say again. Did they salmonize him also or just a wash? I don't, salmonize? What is that? Oh, yeah, salmonizing, you don't know? Oh, my I've God, are they still it. in business? You, when you used to send your, or my, when my father used to send the car to the car wash, oh. you could pay an extra $10 <laughs> or something, and they would salmonize, salmonize it. I think that was the name of the company. I don't want no salmon on, uh, on Charlie. <laughs> I, I'm going to, yeah, no. Um, and then they also offer all, all sorts of things, like I got his nail nails clipped um when he was there last time um and he just really loves it and it's so funny because charlie to me is such a has so much energy and jumps up on stuff and i'm trying to train him not to jump up on stuff and things like that so when i went in i was like so how how was he you know worried she's like oh he's a doll oh i love him he doesn't jump or bounce off the yes, walls or anything know. and i'm like 
what is this the same dog? Like this this yeah. dog right here. Uh, but so yeah, so um, we know we we know that from uh, Charlie at the at the groomer because Charlie is up on people and yeah. it, it seems I, I've read is that they are reluctant to be too crazy with strangers in a, in a strange situation. Yeah, exactly. So if if those people were in your house, he'd probably be jumping all over right. them. Right, exactly, exactly. But he's figuring, I don't know these people, and I certainly don't know this place. <laughs> exactly. I'm not all that excited right now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But yeah, so it's it's so hard. To, it feels like a very personal thing to find oh, uh, doggy good. daycare that, that really matches with, uh, with you and so... I found one. Perfect. I'm happy about that. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Oh, let's so in this next episode we have some great stuff. We have all the baby stuff and then also the last, the very last of Charlie's doggy gadgets. So you'll get to see Charlie this episode. So Oh we don't know. Oh, okay. okay. So what do you have uh, for us? Oh uh, well well let's see we're gonna start. So there was this you know, do, do things happen to you that you think this was planned and I should follow through on it. So I was walking up from the arena uh, about 10 days ago and there was a magazine on a park bench, no one there. And I look over and the magazine, it says like parroting magazine on it. And I go, well, there's nothing. But then there's a big banner across the top. Um, biggest baby gadget show in the U S this what? weekend. You know, and I thought, I thought, you know what? This could be fun. So um, I emailed them and they said, oh, yeah, come down. We have like tons of stuff. So Dennis and I went and I actually found enough stuff for this week and next week because technology is kind of moving into every area. Right. And uh, well, I'll jump in with uh, the first thing. Uh, you know what? Did I put a pic? Just can you go to the picture on my website that uh, is it's under tonight's show or I put it up there and I'll tell you the reason that I thought was, this was a, a funny thing that happened when I saw this. There you go. Because can you zoom in on that? Yeah. Here. So I, I didn't I just saw that and I, I was approaching it from the back and I'm thinking, what is this beach buggy <laughs> do, doing at the baby show? And, and I walk over and I realize it, it almost looks like the baby is an afterthought. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they said the, the, the baby, the baby seat is suitable from birth until the kid is, weighs 50 pounds. Whoa. But you can tow 35 pounds of groceries in the grocery bag. You can carry 65 pounds of other stuff under the grocery bag. And if you're just listening to the podcast, there's a big ice chest under there and it looks like sleeping bags. There's a right, couple you, of you, orange... You're burying the lead here. There's traffic cones <laughs> traffic. on this baby stroller. Just in case you need to do some, I don't know, some light electrician work or, you know, yes. run a cable from somewhere. Comcast may be uh, using these baby carriers to... Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now this is you incredible. Yes. So now that you have seen it, I asked the price. So I'll ask you in the chat room <laughs> about what this might oh, cost. Man. I'm going to okay. guess uh, my guess is is I would say my first thought is 500, so that means that it's like 700. Uh so I'm, I'm, my final answer answer is yeah, 699 or Seven hundred dollars. Oh, okay. The ch the chat room. The chat, the chat room. Wow, twenty. <laughs> Becky's up to twenty five hundred. Okay. Yeah. This 3, thing. Golly. This thing sells for eight hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. Wow. Now I must admit, uh, uh, well, they, they they have a one minute video. This has, according to them, fifty configurations. Of, of what you can do with it. So I'll show you the little one minute video and then I'll tell you uh, why I picked out this and something really clever that they do at the baby show. So let's just watch their little video. Here's their logo right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Abigail with Ostlin. I'm going to show you how to unfold and fold your entourage stroller. 
The best way to unfold your entourage is to stand in front of the stroller. Use your shin to press against the frame. Push the small metal button while sliding both of the levers toward you and lift up. Next, slide the levers on the front frame towards you and lift up. Adjust the handlebar to any of the four positions to accommodate your height and comfort. To fold the entourage, apply the brake and remove the market tote. Slide the levers on the front frame up and push forward. To fold the rear frame, push the metal button in with your thumb while sliding the levers up. Fold forward. To stand the entourage when folded, lift the front frame up and rest the stroller on its fenders. And then, Chad, can you just pan down that their website because there are... Uh, Here, oops, oh, I gotta uh, go to their website. Oh, oh, I thought you were on their website, right, Here, okay. Uh, uh, and, uh, that, oh, yeah, 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 just go straight <laughs> maybe, down. Maybe and, to figure it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they don't you can tell, you can see how much rehearsing we do before exactly, the show. Exactly, I know. Right. Uh, there we go, finally Chad, got it. Chad calls it 729. Yeah, just keep going down mm -hmm. and down and down and down. Oh, you know what? That that that's a different website, but that's okay. Oh gosh, dang right. it! Oh man, no, don't even worry about it. So this company, Ativ, did something very clever. Uh, I've never been to a, a show quite like this where everything there is for sale. So people want to buy these eight hundred and fifty dollar strollers oh so it's and not just a press event it is no a no it's, no no the press is sort of an afterthought that's why Got i called it. i said i said i know it's a, do you offer press passes and they said oh yeah just come into the desk and tell us who you are and and uh, you can just go in um but this company uh aptive they sell a um, a monthly service for people who want to work out, run with their kids and whatnot. So as an app, they really don't have anything to put on the table. So what they built was a little stroller test track. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here's another video that I shot at the test track. Hey, Dick DiBartolo, Man's Madness writer, and it gives with New York City Baby Show. There are dozens of people with strollers here selling them. And so what do they have? They have the stroller test track, okay? So you go up a ramp, you go over stones, you go over bricks, you go over cobblestones. You have to go up a step. You have to go through a gate. We're going to walk over here. We're, we're going to be trampled by by people testing strollers. Evidently, this is one of the most popular things at the show. And here we go. They're going over bricks. We're going over here. They have to, the stroller has to be able to go up this step. And then we have a lady who holds the gate open for you. I think and then the they have to go down to a open step. Their own gate. <laughs> then we see how the stroller behaves on carpeting. Oh, this is really neat. See how a stroller behaves on gratings. And then how it just goes back down a ramp. That is a really interesting way because, you know, strollers, they are into the hundreds, 500, 800. So you really want to be aware. I, you know, it's very funny. I think that... I. I think that last guy, his kid just likes it. <laughs> he has the kid in the stroll and the kid is laughing. One, so I think he's now going around for his third trip. <laughs> Dick D. Bartola, man's Madness writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv at the adaptive stroller test track. <laughs> um, yeah, they should have, uh, there's some people throwing out other ideas. Yeah, going through TSA. Going down oh, the jetway, <laughs> going through small aisles in a grocery store. Oh, that's a um, yes, yes, yes. That's a that's a like great it. idea. Strolling that's through trash on the street of the streets of New York. Like I think this is this is a good idea. I, I think we could expand on this a little bit. Uh, yes, that, yes, that would be a very funny thing. And then we should have uh, a rainstorm area where right. people go. Exactly. Get the, See if the kid gets wet or not. Make sure you uh, get the kid like a little upset so they're currently <laughs> crying. And yeah, or you could maybe simulate that with a little 
boom box that just blares crying children sounds. Yeah, I, I you like know, we it. should be we should be in the stroller business. No one has invented the cone of silence for the crying <laughs> child. That Perfect. you just hit a button and uh, this cone of silence comes down over the kid. I and think you can should, still observe them. Yeah. But you don't hear them. We should talk to Bose. You know, they have those ner- <laughs> noise noise canceling headphones yeah, that make yes. noise canceling strollers that emit the yes. exact same sound as the baby, so it just cancels out the uh, the sound. I like it. Exactly. It was well, it'll good. be on Kickstarter uh, next week. Yes, exactly. We want credit. We want credit. Uh, okay, the smart button for babies is another clever thing for under 100 bucks. Let's take a look at that. Hey, Dick Bartolo, Mads Mattis writer, and the Gizwiz, One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. At the New York City Baby Show, we're talking with Jason. Yes. The, oh, amazing. And Jason is with Mon Baby, and he's going to tell us what it is because it is a smart monitor. Is that correct? Yeah, so this is a baby wearable. It's a, a smart monitor and a button, and it attaches to your baby's clothing through the snap piece. You don't need to buy anything special. Any kind of baby onesie will do. And it fits securely, so an adult is the only one who could really take this on and off. A baby couldn't have the dexterity or strength to remove this. And what you do is you download an app onto your smart device, an Android or an iPhone. And what it does is when this, uh, when your baby moves, you're going to see his activity bar fill up. And the two things that it really monitors are rollovers and breathing. So, for example, if your baby rolls over in the middle of the night, which could be potentially dangerous, you're going to get an alert straight to your phone. If your baby stops breathing and it doesn't detect any breathing movement after 15 or 20 seconds, you'll also get an alert. And you can customize it. There's like a bunch of different settings. If your baby, uh, if you want to know if your baby falls or there's a jolt in the crib, it's going to tell you. But we're trying to really give you information that, you know, a, a common video audio monitor would not give you. If you're asleep, if your babies are asleep, audio video monitor is not going to help you too much. Um, and then we have this back end data system, which gives you some historical data. So you can log in and just see, you know, how your baby's activity was in the middle of the night and go back and see where the alerts happen. So um, this is in beta testing, but we're trying to give you as much information as we can about your baby. Okay, and, and how much is it, does the device cost? And $99.99, and it's available at Amazon, Target, Walmart.com on our website, MomBaby.com. And there's no monthly charge or no fee beyond, beyond the night? And all you need is the button, and you get... Uh, two coin cell batteries that last about three weeks and a mini screwdriver and you're set. You don't need to buy anything additional down the road. When As your baby grows, the mom baby is still, you don't have to buy anything new. It's just, it sort of grows with your baby. Okay, and not having a baby, what it was the age range that you would use this? So ideally a newborn to about one year. Um, but let's say you're concerned about breathing, you can use it like, you know, up until about like one and a half years, I'd say two years. Um, because people like, you know, if your baby becomes a tummy sleeper, you can still use the other functions. Excellent. You know what, uh, this is maybe a strange question, but could an older adult use this so that you would know if they have fallen? Um, it's probably not what you recommend, but I'm just asking. So a newborn? So, I mean, we have looked at some, you know, using an adult product uh, in a similar fashion, but this exact product wouldn't work for an older uh, older adult. Okay, so if I fall down, I'm not getting up, and this is not going to help me. Dickie Bartolo, Mads Metis, try to end the Gizwiz One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. Bye. That's not what uh, they mean when they call you a baby, Dick. Uh, that's, yeah. That's completely, oh, okay. completely different. This is a fantastic product. I, I really, really like it, and the chat room seems to agree that this is... Uh, very useful because yeah a baby monitor is nice uh, a baby monitor is something that you should probably have but if you're asleep and not looking at the monitor the monitor isn't smart enough to know if something catastrophic like your baby turning over or your baby stopping breathing is happening really it's only just a live preview of what's going on in a different room um, I like it. And then also the chat room comes up with some pretty good, uh, you know, he's saying that a baby doesn't have enough dexterity to take it off. Uh, uh, a singer says, well, my, my baby starts with dexterity plus two, which <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, I think this is a fantastic uh, product that... Uh, I, if, and a hundred, a hundred dollars seems reasonable. I yeah. mean, it's, it, it, it's for high. years worth yeah. of uh, knowing that. I think it's pretty good. And then you certainly could just pass it on to uh, 
someone else is having a baby uh, exactly. so it gets used again. Yeah, I thought it was pretty clever, too. Yeah, I, I really like it. I mean, that's a lot of peace of mind. That $100 goes a long way for a lot of peace of mind, knowing that uh, it will alert you if, uh, if your baby turns over or stops breathing uh, big time. So, yeah. Um, okay, so we're going on to a booth I went to only because of the crowds that were around it. So let's look at our third video. Hey, Dickie Bartolo, Mads Madness writer, and the Gizwiz, One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're at the Baby Show New York City, and I just saw a woman buy about 15 baby garments, and I, I thought, well, let's talk to the man who's running the booth, and that's Lawrence. And Lawrence, what, is, what did she just buy? Uh, we are selling Magnetic Me, Magnetic Fastening and Vincewear. It's the absolute easiest way to dress a baby. And can you show me what it looks like and how to operate it? Oh, you know what? I love, I love boats. Do you have this in a jumbo? Yeah, it definitely comes in your size. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's as simple as uh, you just open it, insert baby, and close your magnetic fasteners. <laughs> Step one, okay. open. And two, are they, insert are they baby. all different? Like, are they a sweater? I guess sweaters don't uh, yeah, click sure. up. We make a bunch of different products. You know, we have everything from all of your baby basics footies, onesies, gowns, hats, bibs, and blankets. Then we also make things for older children, fleece outerwear, raincoats, and uh, dresses, playwear, two-piece sets, all kinds of things. And, and did you uh, come up with this idea? My partner came up with it when she was changing her nephew. She just thought it was too difficult. There had to be an easier way to do it, and that's when she thought, you know, instead of all these snaps and buttons, why don't we use magnetic fasteners? Okay. And, and has anybody ever said, uh, are magnets on a baby? Is there any issue with that? Sure. People ask, but magnets are completely safe for people. There are no positive or negative effects on human beings from being in or around magnets. And, and just give me the, the price range uh, and then your website. Yeah, sure. Uh, our typical footy or onesie sleeper outfit retails for $29.95 and you can find it at magneticme.com magneticme.com actually I've been called magnetic me uh, a couple of times uh, now don't forget you have to mail me one of these in jumbo extra large you, got it. you don't have trains on any of them do you it's a good idea. <laughs> okay. Dick Di Bartolo, Maz Madness writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at the New York City Baby Show. Okay. Yeah, I think I need one, but with the red hair dye bottles. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. That's, uh, they yeah. need to make that, definitely. Uh, yeah, they I, know, I, I like this idea. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say, uh, when I asked about the magnets, they said that they're refrigerated strength magnets and... Uh, it was Lawrence and his partner was Lauren and they, they went after she came up with the idea, it, he said it took them two years that, that uh, those are the inventors, uh, two years to patent it and do the research and work with the magnets and the manufacturers. So it's a very clever idea, but the, uh, what attracted me, this woman bought 15 of them and I said, do you have an incredibly large family or what? And she said, no, I need a couple for my kids. But she said, I have so many friends during the year who have babies that I'm doing all my shopping uh, right here at the show. And I think everything at the show was on discount. So uh, right. pe people were doing a lot of shopping there. That's great. Yeah. I mean, the, the one concern that I would have, I guess, would be uh, that it might pinch. You know, uh, I've had other magnetic products, but it seems like they definitely have that in mind and that that wouldn't be an issue that the magnets would, you know, pinch fingers or anything like that. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, it, yeah, it. It's closed easily, but I, I don't have the feeling that anything would, would right. get closed in it. Right. Uh -huh. Now, I'm wondering, like, is this a big, you know, obviously, we, we don't really have, have a good history to go by or, you know, uh, context from the world. But, you know, how difficult is it to normally button up a baby or to use snaps, you know, on Well, on you know, the thing was I saw in, it might have been this company video or another video, that some of those kids' clothing have 15 snaps. Yeah. And they go, gong, gong, you know, and I'm thinking, God, I'd rather just have, you know, 
do this and here, click, 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 and and uh, have it go together magnetically. So I think that's why they developed it is because some kids' clothing just has too many snaps. Yeah, absolutely. And and I guess zippers are just way too dangerous for kids. So right, right. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of styles. I mean, I'm just uh, looking through here. Yes. And- Golly, they've designed a lot of stuff. This is just, you know, they're they're rompers, and uh, I I mean, there's just so much uh, to look through. So, yeah, they definitely. Yeah, no. It's like a great great idea. Definitely. They need men's bathrobes with trains on them. (laughs) I I know. I'll I'll be their first customer. They're they're really missing out a big demo on the market. (laughs) Of you know, they got the six and under crowd. Okay, they need the. 18 to 99 year yes, olds yes uh to to yeah i agree magnetic yeah. me.com or it, sorry magnetic mag, mag oh my the gosh. magnetic me that was it magnetic me is the is Magne- the product but it's magnetic baby or mag magnificent baby.com there we go uh is the website to check it out okay with that with that, uh, I'm just going to tease next week. I'm, okay, we yeah, have the, probably the world's most expensive high chair, okay, Ooh. and what it does. And I, I call this the Kerrig machine of making baby formula. <laughs> that is so smart. Why hasn't it, anyone made a I know, exactly. baby so, uh, formula machine? We'll, we'll have those next week. Uh, uh, we went in thinking, let's hope we can get at least One, two or three two. video. We ended up with six videos That's and it great. was great. It was great fun. All right. So now ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the final you know, May you know, edition it, of Chad. Crappy corner. Get and it. as you know, sometimes it's crappy. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. That is true. This is a uh, this is a little hard to make it uh, crappy. They are some okay. dog toys uh, with just some fun little elements. First is the uh, Humunga Chomp, which I get the name wrong in the <laughs> video, um, and uh, we'll be looking at that. And next is the Wobble Wag Giggle. Of course, with all the dog products, we've been taking them out. And uh, showing them to Charlie to make sure that uh, oh, he approved. Oh, yeah, Charlie approved. Yes, so let's roll the video. Okay, we're here back with Char Char. What you doing, Char Char? <laughs> and we have two balls for him to play with. The first one is the Hugh Magna Chomp. Hugh, Hugh Dyslexia. Humunga. Dyslexia in the flesh here. And you can see uh, that hopefully when Charlie bites this, it becomes human teeth that <laughs> makes him smile. So let's try this out. Char, Char. There you go. Okay. Oh, oh, come back. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> you need your, you need your, smile. oh, that's almost it. Oh, <laughs> it kind of works. There you go. Let me go get it. Okay. There you go. Let's align, align. You need your align. selfie there ball you thing. I know. Oh, my God. Oh, are you happy to see me? Are you happy to play with the ball? Are you happy to play with the ball? And of course, over time, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so once again, that is the Humunga Chomp. Humunga Chomp. Um, next is the Wobble Wag Giggle. Do you like it already? Charlie's already very, very excited. Good boy, good boy. We gotta open this package. Okay, so the Wobble Wag Giggle is a ball that has, he's definitely very interested in it. (laughs) Eh? Go ahead. And uh, obviously he's very interested in the ball. It has one of those, you know, sound makers inside of it. He's quite interested. So, uh, you know, He's my dog, so it's kind of easier for me to tell what he's doing. He's pushing it around with his nose to kind of <laughs> make the sound out. happen. Good boy. Oh, he's clever. What is it? What is it? <laughs> he loves it. Okay, very good. So two good uh, balls. Here, Char Char. Okay, sit. Good boy, here you go. 
<laughs> and he's off. And the wobble wag giggle. Wobble wag giggle. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Two uh, good uh, dog toy gadgets. See you later. <laughs> so, so is that battery operated? How is no, it making that? So it uses, uh, maybe you've seen like maybe the, the Moo sound makers where you, you turn it upside down. And oh, goes, yes, Wah. yes, yes. It's it's a it's a version of that basically, um, and so it's just gravity operated. Now there, I think there's a few in there, and this is hard, hard plastic. I don't think that came across oh, in the video, okay. and so this this really isn't for him to chew on or to uh, to you know pick up and move around. It's for him to just be interested in and to kind of push around with his nose and, and that sort Which of thing. He did. He Which he did. Which he did. He did that pretty effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and also, you know, after we turned the camera off, he, he continued to do it. So it uh, continued to kind of keep his interest. But yeah, so I don't know if he thinks that there's like some sort of thing inside of it or, <laughs> or you know, what's going on. Uh, this is actually an As Seen on TV product. I noticed this afterwards, um, is that there's an As Seen on TV logo here. But yeah, basically, uh, just a way for the, uh, the dog. Now, this does show him picking up with his teeth, but I would assume that it's a little bit too big. And then, yeah. Of course, the that Humonga Chomp. Some shoes. That's cute. That's yeah, very and cute. so there's an idea of like what might happen. That actually looks like Charlie, your dog, a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, with the uh, with the teeth. And I tried so hard to get a good photo of him with the uh, <laughs> humonga chomp, but uh, never it never really fully was realized. I I feel like here. Let me see if I can find the best uh, image with him doing it. Uh, I believe it would be this image right here. <laughs> he kind of, kind oh, of yeah, had it. Oh, that's there pretty good. Go. Yeah. So uh, that's that idea. He also just uh, loves the material, and he's already, you may see some pits and some scratches. He's yeah. already fallen in love with just this. I think this, that's just tooth decay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and and um, uh, also, this is a, uh, a softer plastic, so... He could easily chew and and. Kind oh, of you know, are you supposed to put things in there so that you he... can? I, yeah, this is a lot like those. Uh, yeah, I forget the name of the the product, but yeah, you could put like peanut butter inside of there or something. Okay, or, you know, yeah. Cream cheese or something like that that dogs can eat and uh, or treats. Put treats in there that he has to try to get out. Uh, some people definitely use that with that, but yeah, yeah. So those are the uh, the last two uh, doggy gadgets, and um, he's he. Approve both of those. By the way, update last week we talked a little bit about, or I showed off the uh, the self, the easy clean self filling water bowl. Yes. And my fear was that he would use that as a chew toy. Well, one week later, he hasn't touched it at all. It has stayed exactly in its spot. He's been going, and I mean, he's touched it to drink out of it. Let me, right, okay. let me, you know, be a little more. Um, uh, anyway, so he hasn't picked it up or chewed on it or anything like that. So he's been really good with that, and uh, that's been mm -hmm. perfect because he hasn't, he hasn't, he now has water constantly all the time. I don't have to go out there and refill his water bowl because he used to play uh, with his water bowl. So that that gadget also gets another seal of approval and some not so crappy gadgets. Uh, over the last two weeks. Jed, what do these things cost? Oh, yes. Let me show you their Amazon pages. Uh, first off is the, let me grab this, the Wobble Rat Wag Giggle uh, dog toy. That was only $10. Oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Over 1,700 reviews on Amazon, and people really, really like it, around four stars. And then let yeah. me grab the Humonga Chomp. Also not a very expensive gadget at $12, a little bit more expensive. <laughs> you can see the, see the, the hope of uh, what that uh, turns out to be. Uh, that got three and a half stars with only 36 reviews on Amazon. Both of those are prime uh, eligible. So yeah, so you can get both for about 20, uh, $23 uh, for both gadgets. Nice. That about wraps it up for uh, this month. If you are a patron, don't forget that you can vote on next month's uh, gadget theme. So keep your eyes locked on patreon.com slash gizwiz to vote on that. 
With that, let's jump into Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Foghorn. All right, so this is a little different for the Gadget Warehouse. So I got an email from Brian Court, and he said, I thought fans would get a kick out of this. Um, I, and I ran across it a few minutes ago, and I thought you might like it for the show, especially I thought of you, Dick. I think it's a real product. I have not done a lot of research on this. Signed, Brian Court. Well, the video is not from Brian. I did some research, and well, I'll tell I'll, I'll tell you wh wh where this product stands at the end of the video. But Chad, I'm going I'm gonna ask you: Do you own a weed whacker? Yeah. So that's uh, yeah, that's the that's the thing that has like a, it's almost like a string at the end of it, a plastic. Yes, exactly. Thing. Okay. I have so one I've of never those, yes. I've never owned a weed whacker, but yes. I just spent close to twenty five thousand dollars for a new engine. Oh, yes. And now it turns out that perhaps, Chad, you can go boating with your weed whacker <laughs> if you follow this video. Okay. Let's, okay. Uh, check it out. <laughs> the Water Whiz. Uh, the Water like the Whiz. I'm, I'm even in it. I like the name. So these are weed whackers. From grass to bass, real fast, quick, and easy. The Water Whiz is a universal attachment that takes just minutes to convert your line trimmer to an outboard boat motor. It's lightweight and weighs less than 20 pounds. It's also easy to handle and carry. Just gas and go. Why carry something bulky and heavy? Together, an electric boat motor and a battery weighs over 80 pounds. Not to mention, no fussing with wires and connections. You weigh the difference. Come on! Hold on, it's heavy! Shoulda got a water whiz. This is a cheesy video. At first I thought they were going to put it on that, that uh, platform boat. It's perfect <laughs> for fishing or just a fun day on the water. It can push over a thousand pounds. It even makes a great motor for a small fishing trip with a few friends. Competition? Ah, there is none. The Water Whiz is in a class of its own. <laughs> A special thank you goes out to Orion Marine for their support. A special thank you also goes out to the Sparks Twins for their involvement in the making of this video. That, that may have the award for the cheesiest ad we have ever played <laughs> on the Giz right, well, So this is the deal, is the product does exist, and on their website it says that we are looking for perhaps a partner who might want to go in to build these things. Whoa! Their website <laughs> makes a lot of sound. Uh, uh, and also, aren't weed whackers incredibly loud, or they do you have an electric be. one? I so it wouldn't work for me. I have a uh, I have one that plugs into an extension cord, so that I don't. Oh, have to you deal would with... need like a thousand feet. <laughs> you, need, you need like five hundred. You need extensions. a generator on the boat, and then <laughs> plug that in. Uh, yeah, I got that because I just didn't want to. I I remember you know my father you know using it. It's just all the gas smell and stuff like that. I. Uh, wonder boy. It's funny as I ended up getting a gas uh, lawnmower, so that doesn't quite matter as much. But I thought that an electric one was just a little bit easier to, to maintain. Um, but yeah, a, a, a normal gas-powered one it does make a lot of sound, depending on especially the model you get. And there also there's a big difference in 
horsepower and torque and you know how powerful the motor is and all these different things so you may have a pretty low power uh, weed whacker versus maybe a very high powered weed whacker um, you know yeah and I believe they're they're two strokes so you'd be mixing oil with the gas right and I, I, I priced a few online like it seems like the cheapest started about 150 bucks and they're only going to uh, run for like 30 minutes or so. So when the guy says great for a day out on the water, you also have to uh, figure bringing along a six gallon tank and some a big funnel or something to uh, keep your weed whacker outboard motor going. But I thought it was just <laughs> funny enough that people would get a kick out of that. So Brian... I will send you a Mad Magazine and a picture for uh, suggesting that for the show. And possibly three years from now, this could be a gadget warehouse thing that was never produced. Or yeah. Vapor maybe wear. there'll be weed whacker races. All over. You know, I'll say, Chad, we, we made fun of the weed whacker outboard motor. And here in the Hudson River, it's weed whacker outboard motor day. I know. God dang. You know, it seems like, you know, the, the real product that should exist is a universal motor that you, you can buy the motor once and then it could attach to a weed whacker. It could attach to a lawnmower. It could attach to a, a you know, a, a boat, you know, a, a motor, a, you know. Because these little motors was kind of what I wanted to avoid. It was just like, oh, I don't want to maintain another motor. I don't want to worry about the oil gas mixture. I don't want to do all that. But if you only had one, yeah, to maintain. It, yes. Yeah. You, you know, know the, the, the tool companies are getting a little bit close there by making one battery pack. I think it's exactly. uh, Rayobi, R-Y-O-B-I, I think it is. Their tools are green. And they have 50 items that run on the same battery pack. There's an outdoor radio, outdoor flashlight, a boating light, all their drills, all their uh, saws and plane. Everything uses the same battery pack. So that's a step in the right direction. It used to drive me crazy when you had two tools from the same company and they took different batteries. I'm thinking, yeah. what? what is what that heck? all about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. Well, the water whiz. Well, here the at the Giz Whiz, whiz we the Giz whiz like what? it. Maybe, maybe they'll hire me. Yeah. The Giz Whiz recommends the water whiz. Water whiz. Love it. Uh, uh, so uh, we would like to have videos actually made by you for our show. And to do that, just uh, a, a gadget you have around the house. It can be old, old, something you just bought, something you love, something you hate something in your grandfather's attic or your kitchen drawer. Uh, just make a little video, two to three minutes, put it on YouTube. And when you upload it, there'll be a drop down menu and just uh, check mark uh, unlisted. And that way only people with the uh, URL will be able to watch it. Send us the URL. And hopefully even as early as next week, your video can be on the show. You'll get a Mad Magazine, whatever the current issue is. You'll probably be getting the major. You'll probably be getting the July or August issue, and an Alfred E. Newman picture. So make that video soon. If you're using uh, your phone, which is perfectly uh, logical, uh, I horizontal. Did. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, Chad. Did. I do all the videos. Are uh, now we're making them on the LG G6. Uh, make the video, but just make sure we can hear you and you use uh, the horizontal frame. Mail at gizwiz.tv is where it goes. And you get a, a, a Mad or an Alfred E. Newman picture if you live in the U.S. or Canada. If you live outside of those places, we'll give you a great shout out. Mail at gizwiz.tv. And with that, let's move on to the letter.
And Steve C. writes, Incombustible Hoverboard. I know everybody's probably tired of hearing about hoverboards by now, but Fry's has one made by Swagtron. They claim is incombustible (laughs) and fire retardant. Wow. You should review this. It has LEDs and Bluetooth and built-in speakers. Everything you guys like. So there, uh, also, it's $500, which is about what we make a month on the show. (laughs) So if you, Steve C., or anybody else wants to buy one, we would love to see a video of it. And then, Chad, um, pan on down there, because I was on this website, and there was something funny toward the bottom. Um, Okay, I I love that there's some point there where it says, LED lights indicate that you're coming. Okay, so you have your Bluetooth phone feeding into the speakers, and someone's going to turn around and go, oh, I see LEDs. There must be a man coming on a hoverboard. Four movement LED indicators from the front and the back of the oh, yeah, there it is. A- built-in LED lights alert others of your presence and <laughs> signal when you're stopping, starting, and turning. I would think when you're looking at the person, yeah, you would have a pretty good idea that know. they're there. I always look for LED indicators to see if <laughs> someone is coming towards me or leaving or stopping. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty silly. You know, hoverboards have, I feel like, uh, lived their, their life and they're kind of an out of life mode, but you know, what's not, have you seen, have you seen the big craze? It's all over. Oh, spinners. Oh my God. Fidget spinners. Oh my. Yes. Fidget spinners yes. are everywhere. I just went to this convention, uh, this week. Oh, you went to the, oh, the finished spin. <laughs> it seemed like spinner. it was the fidget spinner convention. Expo. There's like maybe three booths selling fidget spinners packed. The whole time, kids are crazy about fidget spinners. If you don't know what we're talking about, it's literally just a ball bearing with a thing you can hold and uh, and weight around the, the edge, and you spin it. And that's it. Yeah. yeah that's, go to Amazon. Just done. type it in Amazon because I bought a bunch of them. Oh, my god. Because gosh. someone sent me an email and said, Dick, you must buy the LED fidget spinner. And there's so many. Which I did buy, uh, and they're ridiculous. They are, I don't know why I even bought it on Amazon, because I was walking down the street today, and my local junk store has them in the window. There you go. They're all over the place. And of course, yeah, the, the big thing is, A, cheap. B, it has something unique about it. So the LEDs, or maybe it's all metal, or maybe it's a specific type of metal. It's carbon fiber. It, it reminds you of your favorite Some of video them are game. Stackable. Oh yeah, there's you got stackable fidget spinners. You got you got like trick fidget spinners. You have USA fidget spinners. You got these things are insanely popular now. And you, you, of course, you got I got a fidget spinner case. I heard one kid <laughs> say, "I spent forty five dollars on my fidget spinner," and it was like, "What? Oh my what? gosh!" I know. So I, know I don't there know are, why these things have become the craze, but no, I don't know either. I know I they like are such uh, an old titanium. I, yeah, I feel like such an old person being like, <laughs> "You kids and your fads, don't you know it's not gonna last?" It, it, it is interesting because we had someone on uh, who wrote about the fidget cube. Yes, and then uh, be careful of, of fidget cube knockoffs. knockoffs yeah. But that never took off like the the fidget, fidget spinner. spinner. No. They are just absolutely everywhere. Ridiculous. Uh, but I don't know for how long. At least at see, I bought two of them because that's something the show can afford. Yeah. Four four ninety nine each or two for eight dollars. <laughs> right. That's that's within the I'm, Gizwiz budget. I think I'm gonna get into tulip bulbs next. I think that those are the next uh, the <laughs> next the big next thing. Big thing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. So, <laughs> fidget spinners, fidget spinners, and um, hoverboards. 
you know that it's the Gizwiz uh, when that's where what we're talking about. Um, and and weed whack our outboard motors. <laughs> weed whack our outdoor motors. Uh, big thanks to uh, you guys for watching the show. Don't forget that we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash gizwiz. Uh, that is where you can support the show. We love our patrons. Big, big thank you to our patrons. You support the show every single week. We couldn't do it without you. Big thank you to you guys. Uh, we are in year three because woo! of our Patreon. Year yeah. three. Uh, of course, don't forget also to check out the show live, gizwiz.tv. Uh, we're live every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. You can also watch the show after the fact on the website uh, and subscribe on iTunes or YouTube. Oh, you can you can watch this later? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh new, we're recording it now. New, new technology. We just installed Betamax. It's called Whoa. Betamax. Whoa. Yeah. Well, but we still have to keep making the A tracks for our mm -hmm. older listeners. Yeah, we the don't audio want to only them. version. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, and then also don't forget, uh, what the heck is it? We're halfway through. So head on over to gizwiz.biz. Not only can you see all of the gadgets with nice write-ups from Dickie D, uh, but we have a special game. What the heck is it? It's just for the Gizwiz audience and anyone else on the internet. It's a pretty exclusive club. <laughs> yes. Pretty exclusive. And this is the gadget. And uh, I got to say, it's pretty obvious this is a uh, Bluetooth speaker, but it has a it has a hidden talent that it is an underwater it is for mermaids specifically a mermaid bluetooth speaker uh and that is the it's gadget. a mermaid spinner <laughs> it I, is. i'm gonna enter it is it's a mermaid fidget spinner uh if you know what this gadget is there's 12 mad magazines for people who correctly guess there's also 24 for funny clever interesting and hilarious answers so get your mind to working over at uh, gizwiz.biz. I do want to give you uh, one more thing to remember. Make a video for the Gadget Warehouse. Find a gadget lying around your house, something that you love, something that you can't throw away, something that you hate and you need to tell people about. It's very simple. Seriously, oh, just, look, good. just look around and you go, oh my gosh, I have this thing, this uh, mobile wireless SD card reader. I've had this for two years. I can't throw it away. Let me show you what it does. Record it with your phone. It's just that simple. Uh, and then upload it to YouTube. And then email us mail at gizwiz.tv. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. See you next time. See you next week on the Gizwiz. I'll be here. <laughs>